Hi, my name is Taoru Wang. Today I'm going to present you with an innovative method that can be utilized to predict the daylighting simulation results of non-standard glazing systems via neural network. For this research project, my goal is to develop a machine learning based method that can predict the simulation results of climate based daylighting modeling of all types of window shapes, placements, and locations on the walls. And also, I want to talk about the limitations of this method and the future development of this research so it can be applied in more situations. After going through a plethora of literature reviews, I think that this paper from the University of Tehran can well represent the current state of the art in machine learning based daylighting prediction. And this is their proposed user interface for the system. As you can see, this system includes many different features that can influence the result of the prediction, such as the room dimensions and the interior surface finishing. But they are not enough to describe all the cases that can happen in the real world architecture projects. For example, most of the papers in this field only talk about two window types. Firstly, one opening located in the center of the facade. Secondly, two to four identical windows spread evenly on the wall, which is again, not enough to cover the real world variations that can be generated by the creative architects. At the same time, most of the research projects only talk about the existence of openings on one facade, which is not the case for many of the corner rooms. And those machine learning based models cannot predict those cases very well. The reason that many of the existing researchers limit their cases of window shapes, placements, and locations is that the tools that they are using to produce the daylighting models can only make some simple variations over a limited number of inputs, such as cell height and window width, in order to make the model much more adaptable to the real world cases, instead of having some basic inputs. As the diagram above shows, I encode each wall into a matrix, which includes the information of the window shapes and placements. And then the set of matrices that include all of the facade will be generated and used as the input variables, as long as input features for training the neural network model. And technically, as long as those grids are dense enough, this method can adapt any shapes of windows. For example, in this extreme case, there are randomized shapes of windows on all of the facades, which most of the existing machine learning based models can neither describe nor predict. But with my method, I can turn their shapes, placements, locations, and even their transmittency into a set of matrices. And the matrices will be used as the input features for the neural network. At the same time, in order to understand how the input structure can affect the final result, I also generated a data set that only marked the outline of the windows as one, which will also be analyzed later. So here's a workflow for my innovative method. The process includes four parts, data generation, data processing, model training, and model validation. As you can see, the key part is the data processing. Again, instead of having some simple inputs, in this method, all of the glazing areas on the wall will be embedded into a set of matrices and used as the input features. And of course, the simulation results that were generated by the CBDM method will just be used as the target variables. So for the data generation part, I created 5,000 samples, which are 30 by 30 by 10 feet boxes located in Raleigh, North Carolina. And each of the data samples has zero to five randomized glazing on each of its walls. I used Honeybee as a control mechanism and radians were used as a core for this simulation process. At the same time, the weather data was in the EPW format. Here are some of the samples from this data set. As you can see, a 10 by 10 sensor grid was generated and the daylight autonomy simulation result from each of the sensors were embedded into a CSV file. And the next part is the data processing, which is a key to this research project. And again, the information of the windows has been turned into matrices brought into the machine learning model and used as the input variables. So here is what part of the final data sets looks like. On the left is the input variables, which is a data set used to describe window shapes and placements on each wall. There are 5,000 rows and 456 columns. And on the right are the target variables, which are the 10 by 10 matrices 
that record the daylight autonomy result of the 5000 simulations. And this is one of the data samples. And you can see that the daylight autonomy down below records the simulation percentages that were generated by the radiance. The next part is the model training. I used artificial neural network from Scikit-learn. And then I applied the neural network to predict all different types of daylight matrix, such as daylight autonomy, continuous daylight autonomy, and useful daylight illuminance. As the plot indicates, the continuous daylight autonomy and daylight autonomy both can achieve extremely high accuracy, while the R-squared values of useful daylight illuminance are relatively low, but they still can achieve 0.9 when the sample size is big enough. And specifically for continuous daylight autonomy, when the sample size is around 1,700, the R-squared value can reach 0.95, which is extremely high. And as you can see here, while it takes the honeybee and radiance more than 15 seconds to run one simulation result, it only takes the neural network less than 10 seconds to train the model with 4,000 samples. And prediction process takes less than one over a thousand seconds, which is so efficient, but the accuracy is still extremely high. I also compared the input variables between the different notation methods, and the results indicate that marking all the window openings as one outperforms the other method, which is only marks the outline as one. For the validation process, this is a sample that are generated outside of the existing data set. As you can see, although for some specific data points, the difference between the CBDM generated daylight autonomy data versus neural networks prediction cannot be ignored. The overall trends are identical. The neural network clearly identified the relationship between the window shape placements and daylight autonomy result. More importantly, while it takes the CBDM more than 15 seconds to get the result, the neural network used less than one over a thousand seconds to make the prediction. This process clearly showcased the strength of this model, but the limitations do exist, such as limited location and limited directions. Nevertheless, those limits can be covered by increasing the size of datasets. However, the limited floor plan configurations are much more complicated. According to this paper, by using a generative adversarial network, as known as GAN, this research team can generate accurate simulation results for any type of orthogonal floor plan configurations. However, their method cannot take complicated window configurations and placements into considerations. So I am planning to combine my method with their existing prototype and might have the potential to make a machine learning based prediction model that can be applied in much more complicated cases in the near future. Thank you so much for your time.